Salatu wassalam ala rasulihil kareem. As we are continuing our talks uh, on the spirit of sacrifice and this ummah, um, we, we are seeing, we yesterday discussed that the very foundation of this ummah has been laid on the spirit of sacrifice. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, used to say, Ana anabn al-Zabihain. I am the son of two Zabihain, uh, which means the two people, two persons who've been slaughtered, who've been attempted to slaughter, to be slaughtered in the path of Allah. We all know about Ismail alayhi salam, that he was Zabihullah, and that's why we are celebrating Eid al Adha a few days from now. But very few of us know about um, the other Zabih in the lineage of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi sallam. It happened to be his own father, Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib. And it has a very interesting story behind it, uh, which has been narrated by, uh, the whole story has been narrated by Ibn Hisham, Tabari, and others, other such historians. Uh, Abdul Muttalib, who was the grandfather of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam, was also the chief of Quraysh and the caretaker of Kaaba. One, one night when he was sleeping, he saw in his dream a man who told him to dig in a certain place near Kaaba. And he ignored it at initially, he did not know what to do. But that dream, that man repeatedly visited him in that dream. And that dream repeatedly came to him. And eventually the man said, when he said, dig what? He said, dig Zamzam. Then Abdul Muttalib asked him, what is Zamzam? He said, that stream, the water of which will never dry up and the water of which will never reside, never lessen. So the place that was identified in his dream, Abdul Muttalib with his son uh, Harith, and Harith was at that time the only son he had. They, with some, uh, some equipments, they went on to that place to dig and find out, according to that dream, what is inside that inside that place. When they started digging, they found that it uh, water started gushing out of it and they also found the buried treasures of Jerham, the tribe of Jerham, which had left Makkah several decades, several centuries ago. Banu Jerham were the people who were the custodian of Makkah after the time of Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam. But they were forced out by other tribes uh, and when they, they were forced out, they had hidden the place of Zamzam. They had buried Zamzam inside, you know, again, um, inside the ground. And they had buried some other treasures inside the ground. So Abdul Muttalib uh, received, actually recovered all, the, all of these treasures. And he also uh, found out, he also rediscovered the well of Zamzam. And then when he saw that well of Zamzam and those treasures, he said, Allah Akbar. When he said Allah Akbar, the other people of Quraysh, uh, they uh, came to him, they approached him and said, what is it? And then he disclosed it to him. Then the people of Quraysh started uh, arguing with him that this is this Zamzam, the water of Zamzam belongs to uh, not a single person, but, but it, it belongs to the entire Bani Ismail. So you don't have an exclusive right of this uh, Zamzam water. And... Abdul Muttalib contended that actually this was, I was the one who was honored to be revealed about its place. I was the one who was told about this place. So I have all the right over this Zamzam. But then the, when the people from Quraysh argued, then there's a long story that they decided that we will proceed to a, a woman sorcerer in, in, in Sham in Syria. And on their way they saw certain signs which convinced them that Abdul Muttalib has, is the rightful owner of Zamzam. So, say, so they backed off and they let Abdul Muttalib have the rights of Zamzam. So this is uh, the story how Zamzam you know, was rediscovered at the time of Abdul Muttalib before the birth of, of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, before the birth of his, even his father, Abdullah. Now at that time when um, Abdul Muttalib saw the great honors that he is receiving from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he vowed, he pledged, he made a qasam. He, he said that if I'm going to have 10 sons, then I'm, I'm going to sacrifice again, sacrifice 
one of them, I'm going to slaughter one of them in the path of Allah, just the way Ibrahim alayhi salam did uh, in, in, in case of Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam. So, when, and this actually happened, at that time when he made that vow, he made that pledge, only, he had only one son by the name of Harith. But then we know that he had ten sons. And some of them, you know, are major uh, legends in our, our history. So we know about Hazrat Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, we know about uh, Abu Talib, and we know about, uh, we know about Hazrat Hamza, Razi Allah Anhu, and we know about some other, uh, others have been named by historians. Their other uh, sons have been named by historians. So in all, there were 10 sons. So when they, all of them reached the age of maturity, when all of them became mature, Abdul Muttalib um, disclosed his vow, his pledge, his qasam before all of them. And they were all uh, obedient to him. They all listened to him and they said, well, what, whatever you have vowed, Father, you can go ahead and you can proceed with it. So how would they det- now determine which one of those ten sons would actually be slaughtered? Because in, in Hazrat Ibrahim salam's case, it was pretty, pretty clear that was, it's going to be just Ismail salam. But here, he had vowed, but he had not singled out any single son. So now, in old Arab tradition, the rivayat was, the tradition was, the rivaj was that they would draw arrows. So they asked, he, Abdul Muttalib asked each one of his son to bring an arrow to him with his name identified on that arrow. And he took it to the guardian of Hubbal, uh, uh, an idol whom they used to worship. And they started drawing the names. And it turned out that the arrow which had Abdullah written on it, on it Abdullah who was a father of Hazrat Muhammad Wasallam, his name was drawn and he was chosen to be the sacrifice. When he was chosen to be the sacrifice, Abdul Muttalib did not hesitate in fulfilling his vow and in fulfilling his, his pledge. And he proceeded with a knife uh, near Kaaba and he took Abdullah with him. But Quraysh and Banu Maghzum, especially Ab- Abu Talib, stood in his way and tried to convince him not to slaughter Abdullah. But then uh, Abdul Muttalib was... Um, uh, was d- distressed because he said that I've made a vow with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I cannot break it like that. So what should I do now? So they said, why don't we, again, they, at that time they used to um, consult sorcerers most of the time. So they, again, used a woman sorcerer to find out the solution to this problem. So they asked her, what should we do now? So she recommended that uh, this time, again, the, the, the arrow should be drawn, but this time, against Abdullah, it would not be his brothers, but instead of brothers, it would be ten camels. So on one hand, it was ten camels, and on the, on the other hand, it was Abdullah. And the, the lots were drawn, the arrows were drawn. And again, guess what happened? Again, Abdullah's name appeared. Abdullah's name was drawn. Then the sorcerer said that, Keep doing this up, but start keep adding ten camels in every round, and then keep on drawing the lots or drawing the arrows. So then again, twenty camels, thirty camels, forty camels. Again, Abdullah's name would appear and reappear again and again, to the extent that eventually, when it was hundred camels, hundred camels, then the, when the uh, arrows were drawn, instead of Abdullah's in, instead of Abdullah's name. The uh, it, the uh, the arrows pointed out to the two hundred camels. At this time, they decided that they would slaughter hundred camels instead of Abdullah, this, the father of Prophet sallallahu From that time, before that time, the blood money for a for a for a for a person who's been murdered was ten camels in Arabic tradition. From this incident onward, it was fixed to be 100 camels instead of 10 camels, something that was later on adopted by Islam as well. So that's the story behind Nabi Karim Sallallahu saying, Anabnu Zabihain, I am the son of two Zabihain, which means, you know, two people who've been uh, named to be slaughtered in the path of Allah. One, Ismail alayhi salam, and the other, Abdullah. 
uh, the very fa- the very own father of Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So how how things indicate historically, traditionally, that Allah subhanahu wa taala has raised this ummah on the spirit of sacrifice, and we'll talk more about it about the specific sacrifices that Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi himself made in his life. Inshallah, starting tomorrow. Jazakallah khairan for listening. I'll see you tomorrow. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.